honestly think uh, we were all born to create and we were all born for community and those two things come to a head in our shop. You get to come in here and make what's important to you and then you get to share that with other people. So there's cross mentorship. It's not just from us as teachers to uh, students. It's from student to student and maker to maker and there's a lot of that that happens. I get that feeling when I'm actually working in here with students. Uh, I get to know them and they inspire me and uh, it's really neat that they get to inspire each other as well. Hey, I'm Ron Hardman. Welcome to Colorado Springs, Colorado at Kilroy's Workshop. So at Kilroy's Workshop, we do bladesmithing, blacksmithing, and welding. We teach classes. We open up the, the place for makerspace, and we make cool stuff. I don't remember the first time I worked with steel. It goes back that far. Uh, one of the, my first recollections was actually making a throwing star, uh, and then I threw it around my bedroom at home. Stuck in the wall, 16-point throwing star. It was epic. I've been working with uh, all different kinds of mediums, steel just um, among them for ages. I ended up working uh, as a, an intern or an apprentice at Woodward Governor when I was 14 years old at a machine shop and that was kind of where I, I really got into metalworking. My dad was a shop teacher, so 36 years in education, part of it as a special ed teacher and a good chunk of it as an industrial arts teacher. I grew up in industrial arts. Uh, I'd spend every day after school there and really fell in love with it, um, getting to hang out with my dad. It was a good bonding time. For Kilroy's workshop, starting this, nine years ago, I kicked this thing off and uh, started off with some blacksmithing and woodworking and some different types of classes, primarily for kids. The first five years, we only taught kids. And then uh, parents raised their hand and said, what about us? And so that's how it kind of grew into what it is today. I'm Josh Hardman. Um, I'm Ron's son. Uh, Ron's the owner. Um, I've been working at Kilroy's um, for about eight years now. We're just a little hole in the wall company and we just teach people how to blacksmith, bladesmith, and weld. Been here for about two years. Uh, a buddy of mine named Matt, he actually got me a job here at Kilroy's and I had never smithed before in my life and just over the past two years I've really fallen in love with the craft and I've made all kinds of really cool things from swords to axes to knives and even picking up some welding skills as well. This is what I want to do the rest of my life, um, just making stuff, um, no matter what it is, wood, metal, anything. About five years ago, my dad came to me and asked me if this was something why he, if it was something I would want to do. And uh, being so young, I, well, I wasn't too sure about it, but I decided to give it a try and little did I know it become my passion in my life. The second I started doing anything with steel, I just was ready to do anything with steel and everything. So it's really the coolest craft I've ever seen and it's super fun because it's really artistic as well. You can get a lot of creative outlets and make some really cool stuff. Being part of this family here is great. Uh, the people are great. Everybody has a smile on their face when they walk in. Uh, we just laugh and joke around and the main goal is just to have fun. Both of those anvils over there are over 100 years old. One of them is actually was manufactured uh, during the Civil War, 1860 to 1865. So this anvil right here, uh, 1860 to 1865 manufacturer, Peter Wright out of, uh, New out of England. So this is a, an English anvil, blacksmith's anvil, and a uh, very, very nice anvil. My favorite, you can see the stamp right on the side. It says Peter Wright on it. This one, you can see it over here. This is a hay button manufactured in Brooklyn. You can still see the stamp on that. That's uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. So also very old and very well used anvil, but I love them. I love our old stuff. You take good care of your tools, they take good care of you for a long time. So this is an example of blacksmiths taking care of their tools. Teaching people is just an amazing thing to see kids from ages nine and up coming here and and learn how to do some skills that not very many people get to know is an incredible thing. 
teaching people is amazing because then you get to both improve your skill by having to teach it to other people, but then you also get to pass on your passion um, to those people and see their passion grow. Teaching is a whole unique aspect of this because you can make something and prove that you're good at making it, but the second you've got to show someone else the steps to do it, it kind of tests your knowledge and kind of you know proves to yourself that you know how to do it for your own. Uh, and so it's super great. Teaching the kids is a ton of fun. A lot of these kids are starting out at nine, ten years old, and a lot of people might doubt them, but after a few times coming over and hitting some steel on the anvil, they end up creating some pretty incredible projects. They strive to be better, and watching those kids progress, and maybe even watching them some grow up as through the years that you're teaching them is pretty incredible. My name's Stanley Yi, I'm from Colorado Springs. I'm actually a full-time healthcare worker, uh, part-time bladesmith. Uh, my name is Harold Hasselback, and well, my past career, I played football. So I played for the Broncos for eight years, in the 90s and early 2000s, and developed this hobby kind of over time, and I love it now. And, what I like to do with most of my time. So. My name's John Albright. Uh, I retired, so I wanted to take up some uh, bladesmithing, and I came here once before for a class, and so I thought I'd come back in. I live uh, north of Denver a ways, so I can't get down here as often as I like. I'm Ryan. Um, I'm 13, and yeah, I make knives and swords. And, well, this is my first sword. This I actually found uh, watching a show on television. Um, growing up as a kid, made swords and knives out of everything that I could find. And uh, as I grew older, that kind of went away. I saw a show and I said, hey, all these folks are making knives, making blades, making everything. So believe it or not, I kind of just searched online, uh, found the shop signed up for classes ever since then. Two years later, I'm here working, making knives and swords and different blades, um, you name it. I've even made uh, cup holders, it's fantastic. I'm making a katana, but it's a lot like a wakazashi. It's kind of in between both sizes, the only difference is the size. Ryan actually designed and printed on a 3D printer the original tsuba, or the, the guard section on there, and then he put that in sand and poured bronze. He made his own bronze here in the shop and actually cast that himself. My wife found it for me and uh, got it to me for a birthday present. And uh, I took my son and some of their friends and we all built knives and got kind of hooked since then. Uh, I think it's a uh, little fighter, loot fighter that I made, and I uh, made a kitchen knife over there. It's kind of Christmas present, so I'm trying to put my time in. I know I've always liked doing things with my hands, and, and uh, I love hunting and fishing and all that, so it fits right in my wheelhouse, and uh, I just really enjoy it. I'm going to make a dagger right now, so I've never made a dagger before, so uh, learning how to make a dagger. He's been working on that now for about 57 minutes, so he's picking up real quick. He's taken a couple other classes before, um, but he's got good control over the hammer, so he's doing good. That turned out, turned out pretty good. He did a great My job on dagger. getting that all symmetrical that's one of the toughest things about doing a dagger is getting the symmetry on there so you got that great out to the point and what you're looking at is finding center point here center point here and having the tip flow right through that line and that looks really really good this is kind of like a personal journey for me um, it kind of gives me a place where i can uh, work with my hands be kind of an artist a maker of different things kind of enriches who I am on the inside and at the same time uh, jogs my creative side as well. The way I got started is my sister took a couple classes here 
really enjoyed it. It sounded like some fun. Um, I didn't get started personally until Mr. Ron approached me and asked if I wanted to get started, and that's why I'm here now. I'm going ahead and clean this up so that we can get uh, and run it up again. I think it's been down for a little bit. It's a bunch of dust collected, so I gotta clean it off. Basically, bladesmithing doesn't have a limit on age. Um, as long as you can comprehend how to not hurt yourself, that you can pretty much learn to do whatever you want. Um, haven't met somebody who's come here that hasn't been able to do what they want to. Um, so I learned how to do a bunch of not too long, and so have a lot of people. Uh, I think our oldest student is about 83, and the youngest we have is about nine. Uh, Kilroy's workshop actually teaches students ages nine through adult. My youngest students are nine years old. My oldest is 83. And so it's really a family environment. Um, we have uh, multi-generational families come in and they get to have fun in here and it's a good bonding time for them together as well. For what we do in here, uh, we make a lot of knives. We make sword, we had sword class tonight. We do casting, we do jewelry making, we do welding, so lots of different things for the whole family to enjoy. It's a good time. I love it. It's fun. It's pretty fun being here together. Oh, I love coming out here with him and forging and making stuff and it's really more fun to watch him do stuff than me doing stuff. So we are about to fire up a coal forge. We're going to be making what's called a railroad spike knife. We're going to take well with these railroad spikes on with a long bar so you can hold on to it. Gonna stick that into the coals once we get them lit and hot. Pull it out of the coals, and it'll be forging temperature, so you know close to 1,600 degrees. Then you can take them to your anvil and work them. And then once you lose your heat, you stick them back in. We're gonna take these guys and forge out a blade and a point out of them so that they can be a fun little knife. Our coals are now hitting. When I bellow this, around you know three to four thousand degrees. Our steel we're wanting to get to about 16 to 1700 degrees so that we can work it. The thing with coal forging though, is at those high heats, you can actually burn your steel. You gotta check it pretty regularly to make sure you're not overheating it, or else when you pull it out, it'll look like a 4th of July sparkler and your steel will be gone. So this is a shield uh, someone brought in for us to attach on the boss in the middle there. So I made some tools to create the rivets, uh, put them through, uh, and then cold peen them down. So it's good and solid. This is another one. Uh, Seth actually forged this one out. That was sheet metal. And then blackened that and then forged rivets. I respect him so much. He's awesome, and so he—he's uh, one of our master instructors here, and he, uh, he teaching lost wax cast. And we were even talking about making wedding rings in the shop here as classes. And so having folks come in and doing different things like that. He did uh, some electro forming and uh, some electro plating. We can even do in here, right, Al? Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, doing things like that. Uh, we do uh, even we did some electro plating with an Air Force Academy saber for a cadet wing commander and making some modifications to one of the sabers up there. So a lot of fun. <laughs> Al is the man. I want to be Al when I grow up. Close enough. <laughs> I kind of fell in love with this place at a fairly young age. I started blacksmithing here uh, about five years ago. 
And um, ever since then, I've just continued doing it and gotten a lot better in my abilities. And I love this place, not only just because of the, uh, of the uh, fact that it allows me to make things, but also just because of the relationships that I get to build here. And the, uh, I love being able to work with the people and being able to teach them uh, what I've already learned. So yeah, all the people here are currently working on swords. Uh, there's a lot of different types of swords that are being made. Some are like sabers, so long, skinnier, uh, slightly curved swords. And there are some that are uh, a bit wider, some heftier swords. There are a lot of Damascus. There's some kids over there that are actually working on uh, making the billets for the Damascus swords right now. Uh, we are also doing casting for guards and other stuff like that. Help me. Again, that, that is a very good job. And you're gonna do the same thing we do on a dagger. Uh -huh. So that tip goes off to the left just a little bit from center line. So if you were to make a dot center here, make a dot center here, okay, and draw a straight line, you'll right. see where that walks on you. Okay, okay, it's and walking so, to the left. Exactly, okay. and so you can knock that back over again. Sure. But what we're gonna do before we get you on the grinder is make sure that that is dead center, and then this side, you got it dead straight. Okay, okay That looks perfect. really good. We are trying to get this mold put together to do some bronze casting. But right now we got sand in a spot that we need to not have sand and it does not want to come loose. This is sand casting. Yeah, it's the, pretty much the fastest way to make a bronze mold. Yeah. It loses the most detail, but speed is kind of nice. Um, for this, you want to have it as packed as you possibly can, because this need it, it. The least packing you do, the less detail you get. I'm gonna be uh, making bronze, and the you know, mixture that we use here in shop is 88% copper and 12% uh, tin. So. We've got a couple of ingots that are just leftovers from some other projects, but I want to make some new stuff tonight. So they've got these Damascus swords, and we're going to unveil the pattern right now. So go ahead and pull that up. So he's got to actually neutralize it. Acid on there. So we use Windex. It's a base. You can see there's a pattern that's developing in this thing. But the, the way that that's developed is we've got two different kinds of steel that are mashed together. They're forged welded together, and they're in layers. And so then you just stack them, draw it out, cut it, layer it up, and you try to get a, a bunch of different layers together. And then you unveil that pattern by by grinding it in different ways. That's how you get the pattern. After I love my job. Part of it's because of the cool stuff that I get to do, but most of it is really because of the people I get to work with every day, both with employees, I've got 17 employees, and then the thousands of people who come through my shop. Uh, we really get to form relationships here and build a community, and they get to become friends with each other, and it's really great to see. Uh, and it's not by specific age. I've got, you know, 30-year-olds who are friends with 70-year-olds who are friends with 10-year-olds, and so they, they actually get to end, end up being mentors there. That's really neat.